How's it going, Yankee fans? Welcome back to Fireside Yankees with your boys, Alex and Ryan. Hopefully, you guys had a phenomenal holiday season, got tons of nice gifts, spent time with family and friends, stayed safe and warm out there. It's definitely been a good time to kind of get away from New York City, I can say that. And uh, it's been extremely cold. So I feel like if you ever, you go back to wherever you live, if you, you know, away from home, go back to see family, why is it that like everyone's parents' houses are freezing cold? I don't know if yours is the same, but my parents' house, oh, it feels like I'm in a freaking igloo. I don't understand why this is the case. Do you have a similar reality or is, am I the only one that's suffering through this? Well, going from Binghamton to Long Island means that it doesn't matter how the heating is. I'm just naturally going to get a little bit warmer. I mean, it's, but at the cold front, I mean, Christmas Eve was a different beast of cold. Oh my God. Uh, but it's, I'm glad it's going to heat up a little bit. Uh, pretty sure it's going to hit like 52 at some point. Uh, I think on Sunday over here. So, you know, the, the cold weather, I'm definitely excited for baseball, not just because, uh, you know, the Yankees would be back on TV and all that stuff, but because the weather is going to be definitely a lot nicer. Oh, hell yeah, man. It means the weather is definitely turning. But today we want to talk about Giancarlo Stanton. Um, definitely an interesting polarizing figure of this Yankee team. When he's healthy, he is an awesome player to watch. He is productive, efficient, one of the best sluggers in baseball. But he really dealt with some injury issues this past season. And every year it seems like he kind of goes through this. Um, the inconsistencies have definitely hurt the team at times. He did play 139 games in 2021, you know, fought through a couple of injuries, but nonetheless was quite productive. Uh, 2022 was probably the worst season of his career. And that is without saying you look at his numbers, he was not the same player. He still hit 31 homers, but the, the first time in his career, he was below a uh, 30% on base rate. And it, before then, his lowest was 30. 2.6%, I believe. So, you know, definitely a down season for Giancarlo. I expect him to return to his normal level um, of self and, you know, get back to hitting a lot of home runs for this team. Obviously, his power has not diminished, um, still remains very, very high in the hard hit percentages and the barrel rate. So we're excited to kind of take a look at what he can do, why a bounce back season for Stanton is essential for this Yankee team and their future success. But Ryan, before we dive into it, how are you doing today, my friend? And what are you thinking about Stanton bouncing back in 2023? I feel like Stanton is someone that a lot of people are going to, I kind of forgot, you know, was it himself? You know what I mean? Obviously, if you look at the counting stats, just not looking at the per rates or anything, you know, you look at 31 home runs and 110 games and you're like, you know, well, the power was right there. And that is true. He hit you know, his isolated power, his home run rate. None of that was really affected last year. It was, as you mentioned, the on-base percentage, 297. That's the worst of his career. His 211 batting average was the worst of his career. Um, you know, and that's not due to, you know, being a worse hitter per se. Yes, the strikeout rate was up from years past, but we've seen him run similar strikeout rates like in 2018 and still, you know, put up pretty good on base uh, numbers with a 343 on base that year. Um, his BAPIP was weirdly terrible and his batting average on balls in play being 227 doesn't really make sense for a guy who hits the ball as hard as he does, right? Obviously, Stan's going to have, you know, he's slower, so he's going to get the ball into the ground, and that won't go for hits as often in the sense of you won't be able to hit a slow chopper at a shortstop and beat it out. But when you hit baseballs as hard as he does, when you hit, you know, routinely hitting ground balls over 100 miles an hour, you know, you're not going to find yourself in situations where you're going to be hitting it in the hole and a, def a defender is going to get to it, right? That's going to, it's, 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 it's a natural shift beater because quite frankly, uh, how do you defend a ball that you can't get to? How do you, how do you, you know, direct yourself? How do you stop a ball, get a ball uh, in front of you when you can't get there in time? So, you know, Stan's a guy whose career, he's run pretty good bat pips, you know, in, in 2021, 2020, and 2020, his bat pip was over 320 both those seasons. 2019 was 424 small sample though 2018 333 you know he's always gonna have a pretty good bat pip it's just the hitter he is um even in his career worst years in terms of bat pip you look at his 2017 which was his mvp season weirdly enough it was still 288 and he hit 281 that season so i think we're gonna see and projections agree with this that we're gonna see uh, a little bit of uh not a positive regression uh, for his bat pip. Steamer projection for a 292 bat pip. They project him to hit 246, which would still not be great for Stanton in terms of you know his career numbers. But in terms of WRC plus, a 132 would be in line with what he's done in pinstripes. Um, this is really just a matter of getting himself to you know convert batted balls that should be hits into hits. He's still remarkably talented. His barrel rate was 19.2 percent last year. That is the highest uh, in a full season. You know any which I'll say is over 400 plate appearances uh, in his career. Uh, his max exit velocity of 119.8 miles an hour is still in line with what he does in his career. His hard hit rate is in line with his career numbers. Nothing really, you know, changed or, you know, 
nothing was really terrible for him in that regard. I really don't see this as a regression situation. I don't see this as I'm concerned for John Carlos Stanton going forward. I see this as he just had a weird BAPIP year, right? And that happens sometimes. Some guys have down years. Um, and I, I fully expect Stanton to be the, you know, the masher he was next year. It's kind of encouraging to see that he was able to hit 31 home runs in 110 games in spite of all those BAPIP issues, right? So, you know, could we see a 40 home run season from Stanton next year? Not even saying in 150 games. I'm talking, you know, 120, 130 games. Could we see something like that? You know, all you care is that he's healthy enough to play a significant amount of games and impact the regular season and that he's healthy come the time of the postseason. Uh, so I don't think either of us have massive questions about his offensive profile. The big question really is where does Stanton play? Defensively, I can't sit here and say that I'm convinced he can be an everyday option. And in fact, I'm a hundred percent sure he can't be an everyday option. He's primarily your DH. Um, if you're looking at his defensive contributions over the last couple of years, they've been pretty much obsolete. Um, which is why we're looking for a starting left fielder right now in the outfield this past season, he played in 312.2 innings, which is not a lot in 2021, 199.2. And obviously 2020 doesn't count. Um, you know, COVID abbreviated season didn't even really play in the outfield at all. Not even a single inning 2019, only 95 innings. So the last time he's played over even 500 innings of outfield was back in 2018. So right now you can't trust him. Does he have a great arm? Yes. Is he actually a little bit more athletic than people give him credit for? Yes. He actually is pretty fast and make some good plays. Um, but, you know, you look at him as a probably DH for the rest of his career. He's maybe gives you 200 innings maximum in, uh, in the outfield. You know, they tried to get him involved in the outfield during the, the postseason and he was okay. But at this point in time, you can't trust him there, right? So defensively, you can't put any value, put any, put any stock in him. So you just need him to stay healthy as an offensive player. And last year, obviously, he went through a couple of issues. I think he had a calf injury. Um, I forget. He had a couple different issues. I don't know if you recall the specific injuries that he had. But, um, you know, if you were projecting how many games he's going to play next season, it's impossible to say. He could either be extremely healthy. And here's the thing that I, that I, I hate about the entire Stanton situation the more he plays, the better he gets. You know what I mean? Like he gets so good. If he has like a couple, two, three months of consistent playing, he is like one of the best players in the game offensively. You know, like he is hitting consistently, making good contact, hitting home runs regularly, being a, a focal point in that in that lineup as the cleanup hitter. But the second he gets hurt and he has to restart in that entire process, it, it just completely destroys his entire momentum, his consistency, his his season just falls apart, and that's what happened this past year. Um, he started out really strong. He was really looking good, making some noise. We're like, oh, crap, is this like the resurgence of Stanton right now? Or rather just seeing him at his prime um, and, you know, slugging really, really efficiently. And then boom, like he just, it just turns around. This is the lowest WRC plus he's ever had in his career at 115. You know, like this is a player that um, has the capacity to change things in October, change things in the course of a game, the blink of an eye and not having him in the lineup and having to move around judge, move around Rizzo and utilize Josh Donaldson primarily. Like it's just not an ideal scenario. So, you know, Ryan, when you're looking at Stanton, how do you think they can mitigate his workload to get him into a healthy state? Cause like you can never tell when he's going to suffer an injury or when, when that's going to happen, but hitting 31 homers in 110 games is pretty damn impressive. And I feel as though if they can find a way to keep him healthy, if they can find a way to mitigate that fatigue, um, you're looking at a guy that can easily hit 40 homers. So you just need to find a way to keep him playing baseball and not um, I'd rather have him take a couple of rest days than miss two months of action. Cause he suffered an injury. You know what I mean? So how do you think the Yankees can go about actually um, lowering the probability of him getting injured? I don't know if there's a, if there's necessarily like a, the right strategy, but maybe you have some thoughts about that. Yeah, no, the Yankees also can mitigate fatigue because, you know, they're just, I think they're just better equipped position player wise to handle these certain things. The Yankees utility player starting last year was Marvin Gonzalez, right? Who, you know, I'm not going to sit here and harp on him as, you know, clearly you weren't expecting him to hit, but it was just hard to put him in the lineup because he really couldn't hit. And when the Yankees started struggling, which is coinciding when Stan, with when Stanton was hurt and when Stanton started struggling, because as you mentioned, the more he plays, the better he gets. Shelving him on the IL for, for you know, a month and then expecting him to come back and be the Stanton of old, is it's tough. It's a big ask for him, right? It's, it's a lot that's a lot to ask of John Carlos Stanton that's just not the type of hitter he is right he's going to be a streaky guy that's just part of you know the style of offense he has um you know the Yankees are more equipped to handle those things you know having Oswaldo Cabrera in the mix means you don't have to force yourself to put Stanton in the outfield as much um you know even in left field right the Yankees played him in left field at Yankee Stadium in a playoff game in the LCS they, they went full desperation mode right they've shown you know if when the going gets tough when, when things real when 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 things really pick themselves up 
uh, you know, the Yankees are willing to go and try to push Stanton into the outfield and, and, and you know, play him wherever they need to play him if it, they absolutely need to. I, I think I agree with him in the sense that I think he's a far more athletic player than people give him credit for. Obviously, he's slowed down because he's probably not trying to bust it out of the box and get himself hurt. Um, and there is that injury prone label he has. And I won't sit here and deny that. I won't sit here and pretend he's, you know, not someone who's a massive injury risk. But, you know, even if you project again, last year we played 110 games last year was a, a season we would we would uh categorize as lost to injury right so you know i i do think 125 to 130 games is a good reasonable you know good outcome for john carlos stanton i think as you mentioned with the defense i i do think we could see you know him he's gonna probably play right field primarily if he plays any position right and, and you know i imagine with judge locked up and bader in center field there's fewer opportunities for him to play right field um but you know, ultimately, that's the DH spot is going to be his, his for a while. And by the time Judge is a little bit older, you know, Stan's going to be the books. So you're not really worried about, oh, well, how, how will this affect, you know, the long term contract of Aaron Judge? The Yankees are surrounding themselves with young athletic players for a reason. And that's to make sure they don't have, you know, like, for example, you could have argued this time last year. Can Aaron Hicks be a full-time outfielder? You're going to have to DH him, you know, because he's injury prone, right? And not just that, but, you know, there are questions about his center field defense. It started to regress. We saw the Yankees move him off the center field and play him more in left field. Um, you know, there are guys, in, in, uh, you know, like LeMahieu, who you, you got to be worried about their fatigue, but you have young infielders coming up to, to kind of mitigate that, right? So, you know, the Yankees' ability to keep that DH spot open largely just for Giancarlo Stanton is going to be a big reason, in my opinion, as to why they're going to be able to keep him healthier. And ultimately, you know, you can't control injuries, but, you know, the Yankees, I think, are well-equipped to do the best they can in that regard. Yeah, I mean, this is an outfield that has the potential to be elite. You know what I mean? Like, we'll see what they do at left field. Uh, obviously, Conforto now off the board. It looks like the trade market's the best opportunity uh, to plug that position. You know, look at Max Kepler, Brian Reynolds. We talked about them extensively. A lot of people are not on the Max Kepler train, would prefer to, you know, you know, sell the farm for Brian Reynolds. And I understand the concept. I understand why and the justifications behind it. Um, but we'll see what they do. You know, I wrote about the Arizona Diamondbacks outfielders this morning, Alec Thomas and... Uh, um, Jake McCarthy, both of those guys really, I, I think that young, you know, a lot of team control, but not sluggers by any means. Uh, Thomas is definitely a very, very good defensive player. McCarthy is very speedy, 98th percentile sprint speed, good contact hitter, young, I think he's 23 years old and, um, you know, uh, Thomas is 22. So, you know, there is some interest there and it seems like the Diamondbacks are looking for a right-handed hitting infielder, a cough, cough, Glaber Torres. So, you know, you, you know that they, uh, could move Torres, um, MLB network came out with this outlandish trade. I don't know if you saw this Ryan, but, uh, MLB network, I don't know what they think it worth a like, player worth is, but they came out with a trade, uh, idea that was for the, with the white Sox, And it was Glaber Torres in exchange for Liam Hendricks and, uh, Garrett crochet. Definitely an interesting trade. I know I, I get Hendricks making 18 mil this, this upcoming season with a, with a player or a club option 2024, but he's still pitching extraordinarily well And crochet coming off Tommy John surgery um, was really good in 2021. So I don't think they're willing to give up two prime bullpen pieces for Torres, especially because crochet has team control for a long time. I think 2027 or 28 or something like that. He's barely had any action in the majors. So, um, you know, a lot of value there for in exchange for Torres. I would do that in a heartbeat. I don't know why the White Sox would do that, but a lot of interesting kind of trade mock trades coming out. It doesn't sound like a lot's going to be happening until after the new year. So we'll keep you guys posted on anything that we do here or see or rumors and whatnot. Um, and, and we'll get you guys up to date on all that stuff. But we'd love to hear perspectives below in the YouTube comments on Giancarlo Stanton, what you think his role will be, if you think he can remain healthy and consistent. Definitely a, a big ask, but that consistency for Stanton is very, very important. You know, 110 games, that's a good amount of games, but it was broken up by like weeks at a time. You know, it was like three weeks injured, four weeks injured, two weeks injured. And then, it, you know, at the end of the day, it's like, there's no momentum yet. He put 110 games, but it was broken up by weeks of injuries or days of injuries and completely just dismantled his momentum, uh, which is what he is. He's a very momentous type of guy. He needs to have those consistent at bats when he's seeing the ball. Well, he's electric, he's elite, but when he's not seeing the ball, it's mainly because he can't stay on the field consistently um, to get to put things together and really uh, get into his groove. But always happy to hear your perspectives below. As always, make sure to have a phenomenal rest of your day. Like and subscribe. Stay warm out there. And we'll catch you guys on the next Fireside Yankees episode.